Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing good. Let's start the another interesting topics of WebRTC tutorial series. In the last video, we have discussed about WebRTC topology. Today let us see in detail of our mesh topology. If you haven't watched the WebRTC topology video yet, please watch it before starting this video. First of all, welcome all to Engineering Semester channel. Here we are providing new emerging technologies tutorials. If you are new to this channel or new to this WebRTC series, please go and watch our introduction part first. We already know that WebRTC is not only about communicating in peer-to-peer, -peer, it can also be used to make a multi-party or conference call. So when dealing with a multi-party call, we must use a topology for our application. The most common topology is called a mesh, where every peer in the network sends their data to the rest of the peers in the same network. A full mesh network, every peer establishes a connection with every other peer in the network. Hence there are n cross n minus 1 number of connections, where n is the number of peers. For example, a full mesh network with 4 users has 12 connections. Each participant in a session directly connects to all other participants without the use of a server. Hence most of the encoding and decoding process will be handled in the browser. Now you might think about how RTC peer connection will be handled in client. I already said that each participant directly connects to all other participants. So at each client's side, there are entirely different RTC peer connections will be opened. You cannot reuse ICE candidates between each of them, because we know that each RTC peer objects will contain different port and media. If you have three users connected in conference call, then one client has to open three different RTC peer connection. Here also we required stun and turn server to get IP address of the each user. Now I think you got a basic idea about how mesh topology is working. Let us see what are the advantages and disadvantages of mesh topology now. It is the simplest way to implement multi-party conference as it doesn't require any change on the infrastructure. This topology is preferably works for simple applications that connect two to three participants. It is perfect for small video conferences. This is one of the disadvantage also. It only works for small number of users. Mesh network will consume lot more CPU and network activity. More users in a mesh network, the more bandwidth will be required to send data over the network. So we can say, this architecture is unsuitable for a large network. To overcome these constraints, we have some of the other topologies like SFU and MCU. In the upcoming videos, we can see in details about those topologies. I hope you got a complete idea of the WebRTC mesh topology now. That's it for this video. See you soon with another video. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.